Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have hands down the biggest news drop for MCC and Reach that I think we've ever had since its announcement. I'm talking Reach PC gameplay, a first look at the new progression system, firefight, unlock, seasons and more. So strap yourself in, hit that like button and my dudes, prepare to drop. Right, let's begin with what you're seeing in the background. Now, I'm gonna be honest lads, when I was working on this video, I was feeling a little bit lazy and I didn't really want to bother collecting any campaign footage of my own. I, I mean, I figured, why would anyone want to watch some 30 frames per second motion blur stricken reach campaign footage, when instead, they could be watching some lovely buttery smooth 60 frames per second reach PC footage. Yep, that's right, what you're seeing right now is the first ever release footage of Halo Reach running at a true 60 frames on PC. And oh, oh my, it looks glorious. The other day, 343 did a social stream where they showed it off for the first time, hence the hand cam and the watermark, and man, seeing Reach being played with mouse and keyboard just it feels surreal. I never in a million years ever expected Reach to come within 500 yards of a PC. And here we are, watching it being played through Steam. We live in a crazy time. Okay, so while you soak up all that lovely 60 frames per second Reach PC footage, we've got some pretty huge stuff to talk about. Let's start off with the highly coveted new progression system, but do bear in mind, all of this is still in development and it's still subject to change. So, in their efforts to sort of modernize Reach's leveling system, they decided that Reach's leveling and credits were too closely tied together. Credits acted as sort of an XP and also as a currency, and with this revamped system, they've separated the two a bit more to create a clearer distinction between them. This means that credits are now earned based on match performance, but then they later go on to say that XP is as well, so uh, I don't fully understand this yet. We'll come back to this in a second. All of the Reach unlockables, from armor to firefight voices and the like, are all still there, ready to be unlocked, just... I think in a slightly different way, we'll come back to that in a second as well. XP is earned for all games played on dedicated servers, which as far as I'm aware, is literally anything tied to matchmaking, from regular PvP to firefight PvE, and this also includes every single Halo game in MCC, not just Reach. The way that XP is rewarded is based on medals that fall into two different categories, performance and teamwork. Now performance, I imagine, is all medals based off individual skill, so multi-kills, sprees and the like, and teamwork is going to be things like assists and wheelmans and distractions etc, so all in all, it's a pretty damn good way to make sure main slayers and also support players are rewarded kind of equally for their contributions to a game. In addition to this, you're also going to get an XP bonus for finishing matches, which should help alleviate the current really annoying issue of rampant quitting that plagues MCC, and there's also going to be a per match XP cap to sort of encourage people to constantly play games and not just get on, play one game, get loads of XP and then go off, which should lead to a much healthier population. Right, so let's go back to the credits for a second. Does this mean that you earn credits and XP for the same thing, but now they're just differentiated by what they're used for? As in XP is only used to level you up and then credits are only used to buy armor? I'm honestly not too sure. They did say that they aren't done for, like fully explaining the system yet, so they're going to reveal a lot more soon. So hopefully when they do elaborate on this, they give us some sort of clarification about this. Because right now, to me at least, it seems a bit confusing and like this, this separation is kind of redundant if you earn the two for the same thing. Anyways, moving on, they also revealed that earning XP ranks up your level, rank and title, and they also revealed the new level up screen. Behold. Thank you. 
Now, when it comes to level, title, and rank, I assume that level is just your military rank symbol, and title is like the name of it, so in this case, Sergeant Grade 3. But rank, does that mean that XP also increases your skill rank as well? That's kind of weird, I hope they elaborate on that in the future. However, this does confirm something that I've been begging for for like seven years now. I'm so excited about this, along with also a lot of other people. Military ranks are officially back. The boring number ranks from Halo 4 and Halo 5 are still there, but you're given an actual real military rank alongside it, which is just so much better. Fingers crossed this also includes all of the mythic ranks from Reach 2 like Noble and Eclipse and Inheritor, because they were they were pretty dope, let's be honest. Something that is worth noting is that the Sergeant Grade 3 symbol in that new video is the exact same symbol as Halo 3, like I'm talking copy and pasted. I mean, that video was just likely a placeholder, but I don't know, it's still really cool nonetheless. Okay, so let's move on to talk about this new seasons thing. Basically, these game seasons will all be sort of uniquely themed and will bring with them seasonal based rewards that fit the theming. To unlock these rewards, you have to level up and complete challenges, both of which reward you with season points, a new currency. Now, these season points are then used to unlock armor pieces, firefight voices, nameplates, and more from a battle pass esque system in tiers. Just like your boy predicted, bang on the money. Now, you can't skip tiers, so like this picture shows, to unlock the radioactive emblem, you can't just spend 50 season points. Instead, you have to spend 90 going through all the previous tiers, which should add quite a nice rarity to the unlocks that are sort of hidden away in the higher tiers. However, it doesn't work quite like a battle pass. For example, in Fortnite, once season 9 ends, you can never unlock any of the season 9 battle pass items again. They are locked forever. However, with MCC's Battle Pass system, when a new season rolls around, not only will you keep all of the previous season season points that you earned, you'll also be able to go back and unlock anything from a previous season just like you would if it was the current system. That means that no content will ever be retroactively locked away, so if you can't play for like maybe a month or so, you are not ever going to miss a thing. And also, like I've already said a billion times before, but I'm going to say it again, there's going to be zero monetization involved whatsoever. Nil point. Now, something quite interesting is that none of the existing MCC content that you've already unlocked, so like all the Halo 3 and Halo 4 armors and nameplates and emblems, etc., will fall into this system. And for future seasons that focus on different games, there's going to be new content included in the tiers. Now, what this new content will be, I have no idea whatsoever. A few months ago, I would have told you that the idea of bringing new armor to Halo 3 and Halo Reach was utterly crazy, but a few months ago, I would have also told you that the idea of bringing Reach to PC was also crazy, so I guess you never know. They also said that at the end of the season, competitive playlists are going to be reassessed and sort of shuffled around a little bit, and ranks are going to be reset, and there's a possibility of players getting honoured in some way, shape or form for reaching higher ranks within each season, which is an idea that I absolutely love and was honestly hoping to see in Halo 5. One of the best things that League of Legends does is it gives its players a unique skin for reaching a certain rank at the end of every season, and ever since they announced Halo 5's ranking system was going to be like leagues, I was hoping they'd do that and they never did, but maybe this is the time. Furthermore, you'll be happy to hear that a challenge system is likely going to be added at some point as well, with rotating daily and weekly challenges that apply to like a variety of different modes that give season points for completion. Okay, so for those who may still be a little bit confused, let me just do a very quick simple recap. XP and credits are earned based on your performance and teamwork in games. XP levels you up, credits allow you to buy armor. This system applies to the entirety of MCC and not just Reach. Then there's a Battle Pass type system. This is season based and works on tiers. The tiers are unlocked progressively using season points, which are earned via leveling up and completing challenges. These tiers contain armor, emblems, nameplates and more. The only outstanding confusion that I have now is how the Reach armors are unlocked. Are they unlocked with credits or with season points in the Battle Pass system or both? 
that's the only thing that right now to me seems a little bit messy, but I'm sure at some point in the future they'll elaborate on it and clarify it. Okay, so let's move on. I want to cover one more thing that's kind of small, but at the same time also absolutely huge that pertains to MCC's customization system. So right now, the way that you preview armor in MCC is frankly incredibly boring, and for all the games, it's worse than their original versions. Looking at a static JPEG of armor just isn't interesting compared to a dynamic, moving, alive Spartan that actually looks like he's trying the armor on himself. Well, by the looks of it, that's about to change. On top of the already 10 engines in MCC, V43 have now decided to add yet another, Unreal. Basically, the reason behind this is that the original UI was built using software or something that's now been discontinued, so they've had to bring it over to a new foundation, which ends up being Unreal Engine 4. This means that not only does MCC now have 11 engines packed into it, but in 343's exact words, we can now do more complex UI visualizations in real time to support both armor customization options and our progression system. Now, the Unreal Engine can look absolutely gorgeous, so these armor previews are gonna look amazing. <laughs> they're gonna look good. To say they're gonna be a monumental upgrade over what MCC has now is just a little bit of an understatement. And hey, maybe we can even play Fortnite in the new UI. <laughs> I apologize for that one. And speaking of this new UI, they released a few work in progress pictures of how this new Unreal based UI could look, complete with rank, season, level icons, and all of that good stuff. And although this is work in progress and subject to change, man, does this look crispy. Right, so let's move on to something a bit different now, and something that got me really excited when I read it. v 4 revealed the matchmaking playlist and settings that are going to be on both console and PC Reach when it releases. The Halo Reach title update settings will be applied to almost every single Reach playlist in matchmaking. Now, if you can't remember or weren't playing the game when this released, the title update that released in 2011 improved Reach in quite a lot of ways. It nerfed the hell out of Armor Lock. It made Bloom far less annoying and broken. It added Shield Bleed Through, nerfed Camo, removed Sword Blocking if you didn't already have a sword, and more. Overall, this update, in my opinion, was great, and it made Reach far more playable. And it's going to be the standard for almost every single playlist. Don't worry though, if you don't like these settings, then you can just go to custom games and modify them to be exactly like vanilla Reach. But what are the playlists going to be? Well, in the match composer, every single game type and map from Reach, including all of the DLC ones, is going to be playable, and all of that is going to be social. And then they're adding two ranked playlists, and this is where the settings start to differ. They're adding a throwback MLG playlist with the V7 settings with zero bloom, zero sprint. I used to absolutely live in this playlist back in the day, and honestly, if you were to ask me, it's hands down one of the best competitive Halo experiences out there, so I cannot wait to get back into it. But this time, it's going to be even better than in the original Reach because it's actually going to be ranked. If you'd have told me back in 2012, that I'd get to play the Reach MLG playlist with actual functioning ranks on PC one day, I think I probably would have self-combusted, <laughs> quite honestly. And the other ranked playlist is going to be Invasion, which is going to be on the original Reach gameplay settings for balancing reasons. Now, Invasion being ranked might ruffle a few feathers, but I'm going to stand by it. Invasion can be absolute hell if you're getting dominated, and having it being ranked and the teams being fairly balanced will probably alleviate that quite a lot. Invasion Slayer and Invasion Skirmish won't be in the playlist, and honestly, I'm not surprised. All I really remember from these game types were people complaining in the lobby when they were picked, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The maps are going to be the three Dev Made Invasion maps with equal weighting, Boneyard, Spire and Breakpoint, and also a bunch of other Forge Invasion maps with slightly lower weighting. Honestly, I cannot wait for this playlist. Ranked Invasion is going to be something else. And finally, Firefight Matchmaking is making its glorious return. However, this time, it's actually going to be playable. Because it used to be on a sort of peer-to-peer -peer based hosting system, Firefight Matchmaking back in the day was always absolutely unbearable because of the input delay and the lag. 
but thanks to MCC's dedicated servers, that horrendous lag is going to be a thing of the past, thank god. They also said that Fight Fight matchmaking is going to evolve over time, just like the other playlists, which is also pretty exciting too. Okay, so getting towards the end of this now, some more technical details were discussed. Um, work on getting uncapped frame rate is going pretty well, apparently. The main issue they're running into right now is that game ticks that the game updates on are going too fast, so it looks like everything's moving at super speed. I can't really talk in any more detail about this, honestly, but for anyone out there who plays RuneScape watching this, you probably have a lot more understanding about game ticks than others. Three tick barbarian fishing, never again. Field of view, reticule centering, bullet magnetism, and auto aim settings may actually end up being customizable on Xbox as well as on PC, but that's not for 100% sure yet. And field of view limitations on PC are currently being discussed. Basically, everyone knows that when you raise the FOV past a certain point, the view model tends to sort of mess up and look really glitchy, and obviously, if 343 are going to be adding official FOV slider support, they don't want any of these rough edges to be visible because it'll look like it's officially endorsed. So they've got to limit the slider on a per game basis to stop this. However, they did say that they're going to let people modify their ini files. So if you really want your FOV to go up to like an unstably high number, then you can do. The game will just warn you about it first. And honestly, this is the best way to go. As long as the game warns you that this might make it play unstable, I mean, what's the issue? There's nothing wrong with that. Apparently, Xbox Live integration into Steam is going well as well. They're just currently trying to figure out how to make it easier for Steam players who have a lot of Steam friends but no Xbox Live friends to find each other and play together easily in-game. This, honestly, is super important, so fingers crossed they managed to sort it out. And finally, a quick update on flighting. It's most likely to begin in June, but like they've said all along, that's subject to change at any point because the game really is ready when it's ready. There's no rushing it out and releasing it broken for the second time. They have to absolutely nail it at the initial launch, or it's all for naught. A small build of Reach's campaign will be playable on PC's E3 though, so if you're lucky enough to be going down to E3 this year, not only will you likely get to experience a new Infinite trailer in the flesh, but you'll also get to play Tip of the Spear on PC for the first time. And so, that's it. That's all of the new Halo Reach and MCC PC and Xbox news that released a few days ago. As you can tell, there was, there was quite a lot. So hopefully I managed to break it all down, the progression stuff in particular, into a sort of nice bite-sized, easy to understand manner. All in all, hype for Halo right now is huge. We've got E3 literally a week tomorrow where we're definitely going to be getting a new Infinite trailer, along with like loads of more details about the game, which I cannot wait for. Of course, your boy is going to be streaming it right here on the channel. You do not want to miss it. Before I end this video, I do want to give a quick shout out to the boys over at Virtual GG who recently interviewed me about all things Halo, from Halo Infinite to HCS to Mendicant Bias and even Halo Battle Royale. Definitely check out the video, the link is right at the top of the description. And so, as per usual, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the support, and thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.